E.T. It's been out two years, Mr. Malvinas. Haven't you seen it yet? Not the film. I'm talking about E.T. Fairfax, the new head of Global Oil, your boss. Okay, Miss Malvinas. Mr. Fairfax will see you now. <laughs> E.T., what is the meaning of this? I've just received this memo. You want poopy? In the one day since you inherited global oil, you've managed to dispose of assets worth over six billion dollars. <laughs> what is this? All annual profits to be donated to the Brothers of the Soil Commune in Wales, England. All petroleum and oil to be sold at a retail price of 2p a gallon. <laughs> All oil wells to be given tax-free to anyone really nice you can find. <laughs> what is this, E.T.? Some kind of sick joke? Hello. Would you like a cup of herbal tea? <laughs> no, I do not. No tea. Oh my God, E.T., what are you doing now? <laughs> Listen, this company's been doing some pretty heavy things over the years, right? And it's got to start getting beautiful or this planet's headed for oblivion. My God, you're right, E.T. What am I doing wearing these businessmen's clothes? I gotta take them off before I turn into a computer. Yeah, yeah, let's make a teepee out yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah, hey, you're beautiful. Yeah. Let's be Indians. Michael, you're up early. Yeah, well, I've got all the Sunday papers to get through. <laughs> Quite a party last night, wasn't it? <laughs> Did we go to a party? Must have been good, I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, just make some tea, shall I? Hey? Why don't I just make some tea? <laughs> Let's see, one cup, two cups, three cups, four cups. Oh, no, we've only got four cups, Mike, and we need five. <laughs> I said we need five cups, Mike. There's another one in the sink, Rick. I, uh, I expect you're wondering why we need an extra cup, aren't you, Mike? No. Yes, well, you and me, Mike, we're men of the world, aren't we? I mean, Vivian and Neil wouldn't understand that grown men like us need... <laughs> we need... Two cups of tea? Yes. But no, no, I mean, yes, we need two cups of tea, but 
We don't drink both of them, do we? Oh, no, exactly. The other one's for Trevor. Trevor? Yeah, you know Trevor, my friend who lives in the bin. <laughs> what, this bin? Well, he'd hardly live in a biscuit barrel, would he? Why not? It's full of biscuits. <laughs> Uh -huh. Hey, Rick, Rick. What, what? Trevor's tea. Uh, yes, sir. Trevor's tea. Yeah. <sighs> Hello, Trevor. <laughs> uh, my name's Rick. Uh, yes, hi. Um, and I'm a close friend of Mike's. I was wondering if you fancied a cup of tea this morning. Oh, you don't! Oh, oh, no, he says he's feeling a little bit queasy and he doesn't think he'll bother. Uh, how'd you go in there, Rick, didn't I, eh? What? Talking to an empty bin, <laughs> eh? On a Sunday morning. <laughs> There's no one in there. He's gone to church. <laughs> well, then, I wonder who the extra cup of tea is for. Now you'll what he scolded me! I'm just thinking for life! I am the elephant man! <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry about that. It's just. There's something very freaky going on. Lick upstairs. it up, Bill. What? Lick it up every last time. <laughs> now! Oh. oh no, just hang on a minute. Has it got any sugar in it? <laughs> yes, a little bit, yes, yes. Oh well, well I can't because like, you know, sugar rots your teeth and gives you brain damage. Well, you should have thought of that before you came stampeding in here like a long-haired elephant, shouldn't you? What, you mean like a mammoth? Yes, no, look, it doesn't matter. Just get down there and stop licking. Well, no, actually, Rick, it does matter quite a lot, actually, because, like, mammoths aren't just long-haired. They're more like woolly, you know. <laughs> woolly mammoths. Yes, yes, you know. and they're extinct. Yeah, which just proves what a bad analogy it was in the first place, because I'm not extinct either, am I? Just get down there and stop clearing this mess up. Pig. Oh, what, so I'm a pig now, too? I yes, think. yes. Now get licking, Porky. <laughs> Well, I don't mind being a pig, because for your information, pigs are really intelligent, actually. Oh! Yeah, like dolphins. Oh, they are, aren't they? Well, tell me, Neil, who invented the internal combustion engine? Was it Porky the pig? <laughs> the pig it was, was it? <laughs> and the theory of relativity? Was Pythagoras a pig? No! <laughs> he was a Greek, wasn't he? So tell me, Neil, you're the expert. What's the major piggy contribution to civilization? Hmm? Um... It's bacon, isn't it? It's bacon and booming around in the mud. Look out, Michelangelo. Here comes the new piggy renaissance. Good morning, everybody. I just don't seem to be able to get rid of this hangover. Well, that'll teach you to mix your drink. Excuse me, is this a cheese shop? No, sir. Well, that's, that's catch knackered then, isn't it? <laughs> I said that'll teach you to mix your drinks. I already know how to mix my drinks, Rick. Yeah, paint stripper and bleach. Lethal. <laughs> you didn't mean me money. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of strange girls in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I saw one of them. That's what I was going to tell you about earlier. That was the really freaky thing. Oh, don't worry about it, Neil. She probably got lost on the way to my room. I very much doubt it, actually, Mike. Because, as a matter of interest, everybody, the girl in question is with me. <laughs> hello? Hello? Easter eggs all round! <laughs> hello, everybody. I'm the Easter Bunny. But it's June the 12th. <laughs> of summer, big ears. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> what, you mean you, like, like, scored with a cheek? <laughs> well, of course, I wouldn't put it in such sexist terms, Neil, but, uh, yes. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Rick. I'm the one who gets the girls round here. There could be a copyright problem. No, I don't understand. How? Was she unconscious? What, Vivian? Do I detect a little spark of jealousy? No, I'm not jealous. I find the idea of spending a night with you completely revolting. You know perfectly well what I mean. Just because I was the most 
waltzy and attractive guy at the party last night. What do you mean, Rick? You passed out after half a glass of cider. <laughs> Did I? Blimey, that was a bit anarchic. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you, Leo. Even when I'm unconscious, I can pick up the birds. I mean, forge meaningful relationships with birds. Uh, chicks. Task. But women, women. <laughs> I must be hallucinating. What's a good thing for a hangover? Drinking heavily the night before. <laughs> was it like, you know, was it the first time you've... <laughs> you <know. laughs> Listen to this! Good heavens, how could you think such a thing? My first time! <laughs> what was it like? Well, you know, it was sort of... <laughs> you know. No, I don't. <laughs> Sort of... sexy. <laughs> oh, God. I think I'm going to be violently and copiously sick. <laughs> Go into, like, really lengthy and vivid detail about the whole thing. Well, I'm going to bend over and open my mouth and wait until the muscles of my alimentary canal go into spasm. No, not you, Vivian. <laughs> Nick, I want to hear about it, like, blow by blow. Hey? Oh, <laughs> Well, what can I say? Have you got a spare couple of days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what can I say? It was... It was amazing. <laughs> Pretty amazing, and we did everything. Like what? <laughs> uh, like, like, everything. At one stage, she even took her bra off. <laughs> So, so I sort of took my dungarees off and... <laughs> 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 There's those girls! Hello. Good morning. Hi, right, baby. Want a game of strip poker? <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut up, Mike. Hello. Uh, I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I did. Uh, come in. Uh, sit down. Uh, uh, have some breakfast. Let me introduce you to everybody. OK. Last one to find the jungle animal takes off all their clothes. I found it. Your turn. <laughs> this is Michael. Uh, this is Neil. Go away, go away. Uh, that's Vivian. <coughs> Being sick. <laughs> Guys, this is. <coughs> Who are you? <laughs> oh, gosh, it's also casual, isn't it? It's Rick. It's Rick. My name. A nice day for it, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, I didn't mean for it. Uh, I mean it's it's a nice day for weather. Come along, Neil. Get on with the breakfast. <laughs> Honestly, we haven't got all day. Yes, we have. What? He's right, Rick. It's Sunday. We have got all day. Yes, I mean that's hardly the point. That's not really what I'm trying to say. What's the matter, Rick? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just going to make the breakfast, shall I? I know what you're thinking, baby, and if I was to tell you, you'd think I was talking in centimetres. <laughs> I bet you are. Still, as always tonight, what'd you say your name was? I promise you won't laugh. It's Helen. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? Sounds like the sort of name somebody would give to someone who looks as if they've been to Hill and back, doesn't it? <laughs> Hideously embarrassing. Still, at least my surname isn't Back. <laughs> It'd be awful, wouldn't it? Helen Back. <laughs> my surname is Mucus. <laughs> Get down a groove! We dance all day in this house! You asking? I'm asking. Well, piss off. <laughs> hope I'm not putting you all out. No! 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 No!
You weren't there when I woke up. Rick, you bloody liar! <laughs> you said you'd done it to her. He said he'd done it to you. No, 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 no. There's obviously been some ghastly misunderstanding. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Rick is still a virgin! I'm not! <laughs> Expressions on my sexuality, Vivian. Now then, who wants a boiled egg? Oh. <laughs> I'll have a boiled egg, Rick. We interrupt this program to bring you an emergency news flash. A dangerous and vicious murderess has escaped from a maximum security jail and is on the loose in your area. So, everybody, keep those doors and windows locked. <laughs> This is Captain Blood Radio, broadcasting you from 20 degrees south and 45 degrees west of Dead Man's Island on the Spanish Main in the medium wave area. And the fishing is good tonight with the time just coming up to two inches. My name is Billy Blood and you are listening to the Dull Religious Music Program. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my ass. That it should have come to this. Fletcher. <laughs> ah, Fletcher. Uh, no, sir. Smythe, the bosun. You're absolutely right. Can't see a thing with this damn patch on. <laughs> sir, oh, you're a strapping young lad. Why don't you come and sit at your like Billy's knee? Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. What the devil do you mean by that? Is that some sort of joke to my ocular capacity? Uh, no, no, Captain. Well, I shall show you what we do with subordination on my set. Bosun! Yes, sir. Ah, there you are. Take this man out and flog him. Very good, Captain. Well? I flogged him, sir. How much did you get? <laughs> you knew the day he ever came to see him. See? Came to see what? Huh? Was he blind? Uh, no, no, Captain. I, I meant to say, to say... Get your head in the door, you fat old side box! Who was that? <laughs> Captain, that was your parrot. Parrot? I don't have a parrot. Why, I hate the great chance. Horrible, small, fiery things hopping around, breeding and eating carrots. Ah! Next thing you'll be telling me, I've got a talking dog. <laughs> We're scabbard. Oh, it's definitely knackered. <laughs> I can hear something rattling around inside. Dear, I am sorry. I don't know how I managed to spill tea on it from this distance. Yeah, it was, it was weird. You just seemed to like pick up the cup and violently throw it at the radio. Yes, I am sorry. I really must apologise. Oh, don't worry about it. Neil does it all the time. Throws cups. No, he apologises. <laughs> oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I think I fixed it. Good afternoon. Yeah. This is the objective and strictly impartial BBC World Service operating on behalf of the Conservative Party. <laughs> and now, a news flash. Ooh. <laughs> Fancy on me. I seem to doubt it again. What can I say? Well, how about, oh, Mike, please put your hand up my skirt. <laughs> news flash. Excuse me, but I have got rather an important news flash if anybody's interested. Hey, that's a good idea, yeah. Why don't we go upstairs for breakfast in bed? <laughs> Amazingly heavy on the radio. I'm not a virgin! Virgin! I'm not a virgin! I am not a Oh no. The light bulb's gone. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised considering you smell so much. 
Rick, I don't wish to suggest your jokes are predictable, but there are as yet undiscovered tribes in the heart of the Peruvian jungle who knew you were going to say that. The strange thing is, Rick was right. That hippie really does pun. OK, here's a joke for you, Rick, right? How many people who live in this house, right, would it take to change one light bulb? One, me, because I'm the only person who ever does anything round here, ever. Oh, yes? And what about Anna Zulu? song, baby. Let's dance. Vivian, I'm getting vertigo. Show him. everything out to the minutest detail. Your angle of trajection, your specific velocity. Yep. Where to bury you? Where to bury you? <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Only joking, Neil. Only joking. God bless you. Know. You saw the dummy run we did with the sack of potatoes. That wasn't a sack of potatoes, Mike. It was a packet of smash. Yeah, well, everyone knows they're even better than real potatoes. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah, and what's the problem, Neil? Because the dummy run was a complete success. What do you mean, Vivian? The packet was smashed into 15 million pieces. <laughs> And every single one of those pieces was smashed into 15 million pieces. And although at that point I stopped counting, I wouldn't be surprised... Exactly, to... Neil! And you are a totally different size and weight to a packet of smash. So we should be all right. Please, please, can we get on? What is all the fuss about? It's only Neil, for Cliff's sake. Right, now, don't worry, Neil. Now, just remember, as you pass the light fitting, change the bolt. All right, ready, guys? Five, four, three, two... <laughs> affect your overall weight. Ready, guys? One. Oh, wow. Oh, no, this carpet really needs hoovering. Very strange, but every time I pull at Neil's ankles, great flakes of crusty skin come off underneath my fingernails. That's only his cornflakes, Michael. He keeps them in his socks to stop me from stealing them. Ah, that's <laughs> I just initial mine individually with sticky labels. That doesn't worry me. I just eat the labels as well. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> well, the ceiling may have fallen in, but at least the light bulb's all right now. Yeah. Here it is. Safe and sound. <laughs> Where were we? Oh, yes. 
Virgin! Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Here we are, baby. Ready for action, ready for fun, ready for loving, and it's only just gone one. Gosh, is that the time? No, time is an abstract concept. That's a wristwatch. How many must be going? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's two foot long with a big round end? <laughs> Don't know. No, nor do I, but I keep finding it in my cornplex. <laughs> No, I'll never know. Mike! Mike! Rick's pretend girlfriend's been crushed by a sort of medieval knight. Holdy roady ray do day. <laughs> yeah, that's all very well and groovy, but why the fancy dress? And who are you? I'm a knight of the square table. Square table? Well, you see, King Arthur doesn't think I'm cool and hip enough to be on the round table on account of some of my suits of armour have still got flares. Ah, yeah, well, you can't get squarer than that. No, shut up, Mike. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with flares. Mm, and also, I'm not really into war at all. Look, flowers on the end of my lance. Oh. And you know, if I ever have to fight a dragon, I'd try and look at it from the dragon's point of view. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Hippie night. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's my job. Vivian, where did you get that howard, sir? Found it! Well, you can just about blow well go and put it back this instant, young man. I will, I will! <laughs> just as soon as I've blown you to pieces! <laughs> In one second, both my legs will fall off. <laughs> All right, you're on. One. <laughs> no, I suppose half potatoes we've already lost today. <laughs> Everyone, there's a 20th century pad back there and they're giving away damsels. Here, have one. Excuse me, can you tell me what's happened to the rest of the street? <laughs> no, Vivian, no, please. Look, you were right and I was wrong. I am a virgin. Not for long, matey. Uh, sorry about your relative, but you know. Get out of He's a bloody sorcerer! No, honestly, honestly, I was just uh, wondering like, where the bus stop had gone, you know, where that hut had come from. There's the 59 pence compensation for disagreeing with you. Thank you. Yes, I'll get the t-shirt printed first thing in the morning. Guys, guys, quick, barricade the door! Lock all the windows. <laughs> Pretend to be invisible. Uh, I've just committed uh, a, a bit of a faux pas. <laughs> Neil, have you upset the neighbours? No, Mike, I've blown them up. <laughs> you! And who said Sunday was a day of rest? God did. That's right. I knew it was some old toy. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have touched that magpie. Oh, Neil, because you're so superstitious. Anyone would think we were living in the Middle Ages. I don't want to worry you, but we are. What? Oh, no! It seems as though, mysteriously, the whole house has gone through some sort of time warp. Oh, isn't it all simply enchanting? It's like one of those wonderful drawings by Bruegel with lots of working class people rushing about the place with pitchforks. Yeah, they look really angry, don't they? Oh, just think, no nuclear power, no pollution, no electric cables ruining the landscape. No, no day! Oh, no. I'll die if I miss Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Everybody panic! You said panic. I didn't think you meant hang me. Hotting up in the battle between the TV stations for higher ratings. You're very lucky, Neil. Because the BBC came back with strip sex snooker darts on ice <laughs> with Torville and Dean. And of course, ITV immediately came back with Roland the Rat's TV AM public executions. <laughs> yeah, cut his head off, yeah. But now we have. 
For medieval torture. Right. Now, are you nervous, Spassbecker? Uh, a little, Jester, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, apparently, you're married with one lovely daughter. That's right, Jester. Gwyneth. <laughs> Gwyneth, that's right. But unfortunately, she can't be with us tonight, can she? No. no. Because she's not very lovely at the moment, is she? No. Because no. <laughs> actually, she's got the plague at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and her face is one enormous bag of pus. <laughs> That's right, Jester. Uh, in fact, there's quite a funny story attached to that. Um, because she wanted to come along tonight, but her arms fell off. <laughs> now, now, actually, I want you to pay attention because we'll be back after this break. Oh! <laughs> now! Now, how would you like to be tortured, Smashbecker? Yeah, would you like... like some live scampi in your breeches? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, would you like your eyes sucked out by a goat oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then replaced with some hot toffee apples? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Was your crime? Um, whistling on a Tuesday, Jaster. You bastard! <laughs> We've got for you later on pro celebrity torture <laughs> in which Toby Grunsplatter, pain giver to the court of King Edward the Optical Illusion, <laughs> will be torturing a team comprising of Dennis Waterman's Show Business Eleven, <laughs> including Sir Geoffrey Chaucer. <laughs> The boring old fart <laughs> and Helen, the completely mad murderer. <laughs> oh no! The whole house has been surrounded by angry medieval peasants. Well, they think they're witches and they're gonna burn us. They're completely trapped. The outlook is bleak. Oh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Oh, who cares? <laughs> 